Hey guys, welcome to another day by Mike Roser, live from the Mecca, and I'm not Coach Eric Roser. <laughs> Seriously guys, the Mad Max 6 here, I just wanted to uh, take the mic for a second, which I don't like to do. Uh, to thank you, like Eric did last time, uh, you know, we have such a great response on the show and so many great comments and so many great feedback from you guys. We really appreciate it, uh, you tuning in every week and stuff, but I wanted to mention a couple things. Uh, we read all the comments, we appreciate all feedbacks, so we want you guys to know that. And some of the, re the comments that I was reading were saying, uh, well, you know, we can't really, this is not basic movements, and this is like, you can't do the body this way and stuff. So I want to address some of those comments. We try, uh, when we did this platform a year ago with Jay, the idea was to bring as much different knowledge from different pool of people as possible, such as Eric, such as Acid Dog, such as Matt Porter, Milos, all these guys. We try to recruit as much uh, different minds as possible to give you guys a big pool of information that way you guys can pick and choose and vary your workout and try to make some changes to your routine so you can keep progressing so we're not always going to talk about let's do some basic bench press bench with deadlift uh, some some you know, uh, basic things of course we always incorporate this in our movements but you guys already know about this what we try to do when we, when we especially in Google by, by browser with Eric's mind is to give you some alternative to add to those compound movements, to those basic movements. So, um, again, thank you for, for, for watching the show. I'm gonna let Eric take over it here. Uh, take what you want from the, from the show. If you like it, great. If you don't, it's okay. Uh, but we wanna thank you and keep watching. Okay, this is Coach Eric Rosa. <laughs> and I'm gonna uh, follow up here uh, after Dave's nice intro there. Uh, thank you, Dave, for presenting that information. So, what we are gonna do today is we're going to stick with the same theme we've had for the last few shows and we're going to show you some tricep movements that will be able to augment the basics not replace the basics uh, some things that are different than the standard close grip bench press the standard tricep extension the standard push down variations on these movements that you can use if perhaps you've plateaued uh, in your training and the basics aren't getting it done or maybe to help you get some new angles to hit the muscle from that you'll feel even better than the standard movements which I've found for myself Dave has found and many of my clients have found so we're going to show you those different tricep movements and of course we'll close out the show with Ask Marilyn thanks for watching I hope you enjoy the show okay so this movement here is something I like to call the tricep push out so it's sort of like a hybrid between a tricep extension and a tricep push down. We're using an incline bench. We have it set at about 45 degrees. You can change the angle of the bench to get a different feel. We're also using a short straight bar. You can do this with a cambered bar, a V bar or a rope to get different feels on the muscle again. And all he's doing is just keeping his elbows close to the body. He's making sure that they don't raise or lower during the movement. He's getting a full stretch on the way back, keeping the elbows tucked, pushing to full lockout, lock out, and give the triceps a really good squeeze. This movement is really good for building mass. Great alternative, great hybrid movement between an extension and a push down. Okay guys, so this exercise here is an alternative to a close grip bench press. It's kind of doing a standing close grip bench press. We're using a calf machine, as you can see, that's angled. He's leaning into the machine, keeping the elbows close, and he's pushing up just with the triceps. He's not locking out completely at the top. He's just keeping the triceps under full tension for the entire rep. Again, elbows are close, tucked in, pushing with the triceps, trying to keep the shoulders out of it. Great movement for building mass. Great alternative to the close grip bench press. Okay, so we all know that the close grip bench press done free weight or Smith is an excellent mass builder for the triceps. Now this version here, we like to call the Merlin close grip bench press, which you can do with a free bar, but it's easier on a Smith machine, so you can take the balance factor out of the movement. Now as you can see, his hands are placed on the bar so that he's able to rotate the elbows outward. So in this movement, instead of keeping the elbows tucked, we actually have the elbows coming out to the sides. And this is also going to hit the long head of the tricep more strongly, although you are going to involve the entire triceps complex. You can't go as heavy on this movement as you can with regular close grip, 
but you're going to feel a really, really different burn in the triceps and you're going to keep more of the chest and the shoulders out of the movement by doing it this way. A very unique way to do the close grip bench press. Definitely, if the regular close grips are getting boring or not getting the job done, give these a shot in your next tricep workout. Okay, this next exercise is what I call a concentration pushdown because you're pretty much doing the opposite of a standing concentration curl. Instead, you're doing an actual push down. You can see the way his body is angled here. He's leaning over at the torso at about 90 degrees. He's keeping the elbow locked in position. The only movement is happening at the elbow. Shoulder is staying stationary. He's going from full stretch at the top. As you can see, his form is contacting his bicep. And at the bottom, he's getting a full contraction. This movement is a great alternative to regular pushdowns or even regular one-arm pushdowns. The position that it has your body in allows for a really, really strong contraction at the bottom, getting a really good squeeze and feeling it throughout the entire tricep. Give this a try if regular pushdowns are not getting the job done. Okay, so this next movement is a play on an overhead tricep extension. We're using a rope, which would sort of replace a dumbbell. His hands are placed together so that his fingers are actually squeezed together during the repetitions. He's got his elbows and part of the upper triceps resting on the pad. It's a very, very strict movement. This is working the long head of the tricep because his arms are up, his elbows are up by his ears. So the long head of the tricep is the biggest portion of the tricep, builds a lot of mass. He's going, again, all the way from full stretch. As you can see, he's coming back as far as he can. And then he's going down into a full contraction. The only movement is happening, once again, at the elbows. There is tension in this movement all the way from the stretch to the contraction. It's a tremendous movement for the triceps. We're looking to add mass to the long head. Give it a shot. Okay, this is one of our favorite movements for the triceps. I would say this is closer to a tricep extension. Something that you would do maybe sort of laying on a bench with a dumbbell, but instead we're upright and using a cable. Now you can see the position of his body here. Standing upright, he's got one leg behind the other. The key is where he has his elbow. His elbow, as you can see, is tucked up almost by his chin. And this allows him to get a full stretch on the muscle and start each movement with the triceps at that full stretch. He keeps the elbow in this position. He does not let it move forward so that he can get a really tight squeeze contraction to the top of the movement. You can see this is working the entire tricep complex really, really hard. You do not want to go heavy in this movement. You want to focus on form and full range of motion. This is an excellent movement for the triceps, especially to finish off a workout. Hi, Merlin. Different settings today against the green wall. <laughs> What do you got? Famous green wall. Uh, yep. I'll read this off. Um, so I was asked um, this question via email. Uh, I said, I've been following you for, for a very long time now, all the way back since your PRS days. I know that, you were, right? that was the first, 2001, yeah. the first uh, training program that I released publicly was PRS. Um, I know that you were very, very skinny when you were younger, weighing about 130 pounds or so, which is true. Uh, when you started, um, how would you compare uh, the training that you did back then to help you put on muscle mass versus the training that you do now? Do you believe that your training method you use now is just effective at putting on mass as the method you used back then? So that's basically the answer to the question. So um, it's a really good question because yeah. it's, um, it's important to always know when any bodybuilder who's been in the game for a long time uh, did in the beginning versus what they do now. Uh, I'll open up with this statement. Boy, do I wish I knew back then what I know now. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Um, so yeah, it was true. I weighed about 130 pounds when I started. Same height that I am now, 5'11 and a half. Um, wow. I did eventually, yeah, that's, that's what I weighed when I started. Uh, very, very extremely skinny guy. Uh, very, very little muscle mass or tone, even though I was athletic. Um, I eventually had gotten up to a body weight of up to about 270. I probably looked like the Michelin man when I did it, but <laughs> I did. Uh, and now I normally hold a body weight 
or re relatively lean 245 or so. So, um, but in the beginning, um, you know, I, I basically learned what a lot of people learned in the beginning. I read the the Arnold Schwarzenegger Encyclopedia of Encyclopedia Encyclopedia Bodybuilding. I read all the Joe Weider books. I read all the Robert Kennedy books, and I just got as much information as I could from there. Plus, I had some a few professional bodybuilders in New York. Uh, that I trained around and I was able to observe them, question them, question them and ask them what they did. Uh, so in the beginning, I used the basic methods of uh, mostly basic movements, um, the compound movements, uh, you know, a lot of squatting, deadlifting, bench pressing, shoulder pressing, uh, but I did mix in a lot of isolation movements with that. I was never one dimensional in my training, uh, but I definitely focused on lifting for lower reps at heavier weights, I was focused, like many young guys are, on how much weight was on the bar, how big the dumbbells were. But I should point out that I never utilized really poor form. I always made sure that my form uh, was very, very strict, um, not using any cheat reps or anything like that until the end of a set. Uh, but no, you know, crazy momentum or swinging. So I was always conscious of my form, uh, even though I wasn't conscious of my rep tempo. Uh, you know, basically if it was one second up, one second down, that was fine with me, but I was always in control of the weight, uh, and I was always trying to lift heavier. Probably spent most of my time in the range of four to eight reps, uh, sometimes even going lower for doubles and singles, uh, but usually not going much higher than eight or so, maybe sometimes for legs. Uh, and I just progressively tried to get stronger in these basic movements. Uh, I did start using some you know techniques after a while that I learned about drop sets, supersets, <clears throat> rest pause sets, negatives. I don't think that I was using them. I was using them more haphazardly than in a controlled fashion or in a cyclical fashion. I was just pretty much anything that I would read or I would see other pros do, I would try to implement in my training. Uh, I didn't know whether I was overtraining, undertraining, or whatever, but I was growing probably because I was eating an enormous amount of calories. Uh, I usually train to no more than five days a week, something like a three days on, one day off, two, two days on, one day off program. Uh, and and this, you know, this definitely helped me gain a lot of mass because there was progression to it. There was the use of basic movements combined with isolation movements. Uh, and there was some control, there was control to my movements, so I was never doing half reps or bouncing weight off my chest or anything like that. Uh, and I was definitely getting stronger. I did eventually hit uh, a 495 bench press. I was able to, you know, do seated dumbbell presses with 120s, 130s, flat dumbbell presses with 160s, 170s. So I was strong. Wow. Uh, but eventually, um, I did start to hurt myself. I did start to feel a lot of tendonitis in my joints, my elbows, my shoulders, my knees. Uh, and as I started to um, progress in my knowledge and started to read less about what professional bodybuilders did and more about anatomy, kineology, physiology, biology, how the body functions, why muscles grow, what, what really affects hypertrophy. That's when I started to learn that not just progressive overload, not just the use of heavy weights, but there was so many different um, mechanisms by which we grow that I realized that if I was going to eventually reach a plateau unless I started to explore these different mechanisms and that's when Power Rep Ring Shock came about which was basically a cyclical program where the first week I'd be focusing on lifting heavier weights in four to six rep range using some slower negatives more explosive positives then I had a rep range week where I was exploring different rep ranges uh, up from 16 to 20 down to about 7 to 9 uh, and I would do all those different rep ranges in a workout and then I'd have a shock week where I'd, I'd utilize the, the supersets, the drop sets, the rest pause, uh, the negatives, the different type of intensity techniques and I would use this as, in a cyclical faction, fashion and as soon as I started doing this I started to grow again uh, and my body weight went from about 225 up to about 250 uh, and I was adding muscle mass like I hadn't added in years. So this told me, yeah, there's more than one way to skin a cat and, and that training only one way in a one dimensional way was only gonna get me so far. And then if you followed my career, you know that now I've progressed into other training systems, uh, FDFS, FTX2, ESPX2, 
spec, and all these different methods with these little fancy names <clears throat> are basically just keeping the body uh, in a state where we're using different techniques, different pathways, different anabolic pathways that lead to muscle growth. Because the truth of the matter is, is that high reps can build muscle, low reps can build muscle, switching tension times uh, can, can build muscle, especially using longer tension times and keeping the muscle under tension for 35, 40, 50 seconds a set. Those things will build muscle more efficiently than doing sets that only last 15, 20 seconds. Uh, you know, you can, using supersets and drop sets will build muscle. Um, holding the positive, uh, you know, doing a positive uh, repetition that's, you know, four to five seconds, a negative repetition that's four to five seconds, holding the peak contraction for four to five, four to four to five seconds. All these different methods will cause muscle growth because they all force the muscles to work differently. They all signal the central nervous system differently. So basically what I'm saying here is that now I use a whole plethora of techniques uh, and making sure that I tap into all these pathways for growth. And they've allowed me at even the age that I'm at now, age 50, to continue growing because people tell me every day, wow, you're getting bigger. Wow, this is the biggest I've ever seen you. So basically I have shut down the idea that after a certain age, can't really grow anymore you've tapped out for your potential I believe that you can keep tapping into your potential for as long as you keep doing this uh, at an advanced level meaning that your diet is also you know you're still eating your five six meals a day and you're getting your rest uh, and still focusing your efforts on building muscle you have to make sure that your body has to keep adapting to a new stimulus if it keeps getting the same stimulus over and over again uh, it'll adapt to the point that it's not affected by it anymore. It becomes stagnant. It grows stagnant, it grows plateaued, and that's why people think they reach their genetic potential. Uh, my cameraman here, my <laughs> partner here in this show, uh, started training with me in 2014. His training was very one-dimensional. Uh, you've told me many times you thought that you were maxed out and you just didn't have the genetics to go any further, uh, and your body is completely different than it was. Uh, five years ago, yeah. you know, you have way more muscle mass. Uh, your body parts are way improved that you thought you wouldn't get to, and that's because every time we train, I make sure that we're hitting the muscle differently, and like I said, using different anabolic and growth pathways. So, basically, my training has progressed through the years. It's become more sophisticated. It's become more intelligent. It's become more cyclical, um, and basically, it taps into all the different pathways that we have for growth, rather than being one, one being one dimensional, which in the beginning will work for most of us because any new stimulus will work. Being progressive with the weights will work uh, in the beginning as long as your form is correct. Uh, but you're going to stagnate after a short period of time because the body is very resilient that way and we're built to adapt. So you must constantly force the body to face different techniques, different stimulus, uh, and that's where you will continue to grow. So make sure you look into my other training methods besides PRS, like I mentioned, FPFS, FTX2, PSPX2, and SPEC especially, uh, because those will definitely force your body to adapt to something new and you will continue to grow uh, and keep cycling these methods and you're, you should never stagnate in your training whatsoever. Thanks, Biggie.